If there is one member of the Divines truly worth worshipping, it has to be Debella. Known to some as the Passion Dancer and the Lady, Debella is the goddess of beauty, love and affection. She's also accredited for being the Lady of Art and Music. So Debella pretty much embodies all of life's finest indulgences, and all known depictions of her likeness portray her as an astoundingly beautiful woman, the kind of woman capable of toppling empires. In this video, we'll be giving you a little taste of the lore behind this graceful goddess. Dibella is a member of the Aedra, supposedly born from the merging blood of Anu and Padamai. Cyrodiilic mythos dictates that Dibella and her compatriots created the mortal realm by sacrificing themselves and taking on the form of planets. Dibella is one of the truly pure gods. Her intentions are wholesome and her influences are positive on the mortals of Mundus. She guides mortals to truth through beauty and worship. Those who spread harmony across the world are granted with Debella's grace. It's hard to criticize a god who encourages their followers to embrace art and love, treasuring friendship and treating others with kindness. Debella is so full of love, in fact, that her teachings state there should be no limit on the amount of lovers one can have, as love should be spread and shared with great enthusiasm. While that seems all well and good, I guess you could argue there are some issues with that. By that logic, I'm sure love wasn't the only thing being spread across Tamriel. Fortunately, Debella's affinity with love and lovemaking ends with the undead. She discourages relations with any form of the undead, including vampires, so she would be rightfully angry were she forced to sit through one of the Twilight films. Debella passes on her will to her followers through a messenger known as a Sibyl, and a ceremony known as the Exalted Protocol of the Debellan Sibyl, though scarce little is known of this process. Only members of the priesthood of Debella are privy to the details of the ceremony. According to the Pocket Guide to the Empire, our trusty yet vague source for a lot of Tamrielic lore, Debella pays men in moans, and you can interpret that however you like. Those who aren't too fond of Debella's tantalizing teachings claim she is the goddess of whores and lepers, and seem to have a perception of her followers as being irresponsibly lustful and self-indulgent. Worship of Debella varies and is practiced in several of Tamriel's provinces. Most of these provinces have human natives, though Black Marsh is believed to have small traces in the form of the indigenous Kofringi, and some Argonians who assimilated into the Cyrodiilic culture in the Second Era. Worshippers of Debella differ from worshippers of other divines, as the relationship seems far more intimate and considerably less formal. That's pretty easy to justify knowing the nature of her teachings. In Cyrodiil, Debella is a revered part of the Cyrodiilic pantheon. There is a statue in her honour located in the Imperial City, as well as a chapel of Debella in Anvil, though this was desecrated by followers of the Daedric priest Meridia during the Oblivion Crisis in Third Era 433. As I mentioned just before, the Argonians of Black Marsh didn't bother with the Divines much, as they were focused on the worship of their histories. But the Kofringi, who were human natives of Black Marsh, were known to worship Debella quite vehemently. It's quite understandable to worship such a beautiful Divine when taking into account the dreary, murky appearance of the landscape they were forced to live their daily life in. There was even a temple devoted to her in the city of Gideon during the Alliance War in the Second Era. In the Iliac Bay regions of Hammerfell and High Rock, Debella is also held in high esteem. She is the patron deity of the Tigonus region in Hammerfell and is loved by many Redguard women. The Redguard's conflict between traditional conservative crowns and progressive cosmopolitan forebears seems to dictate the general opinion of Debella in the province. The crowns aren't fond of her roots in the Cyrodiilic pantheon, while the forebears adopted her into their pantheon after they were subjected to some imperial influence. In the Third Era, temples dedicated to Debella and a knightly order known as the Order of the Lily began to rise up throughout Hammerfell and High Rock. Also in High Rock, Debella is the patron deity of Kogria and Menevia. Her influence was less strong prior to the Third Era, however, as in the Second Era, worship to her was criticised and discouraged. One preacher of this was Father Pitov, of the Cathedral of Daggerfall, who warned of the charms of Debella. Lastly, in Skyrim, the Nords include Debella in her pantheon and believe her to have been the bedwife of Shaw, who is the Nordic equivalent to Lorcan. There is a temple dedicated to her in the dwarven city of Markarth, and her presence is clear in the Temple of the Divines in Solitude, as well as in the form of shrines scattered around the land. Ifra, the primary deity to the Bosmeri of Valenwood, is believed by the Nords to be an imitation of Debella, according to a Sibyl of Debella, Augustine Villain. Debella has two artifacts that we know of. When you think of Adric and Daedric artifacts, you usually think of epic blades and mystical staves, but Debella has different ideas. One of her artifacts is the brush of true paint. This seemingly standard paintbrush is said to have bristles woven from Debella's own hair, and the artist possessing the artifact has the ability to enter a canvas. Once inside, they can paint things simply by imagining them. This uncanny artifact has led to some interesting events in Tamriel's history. It was used by three captives of a Dunma wizard named Bravam Lefandas to escape his basement. It was also used by one of Bravam's descendants, Rife Lefandas, when painting 
the great forest of Cyrodiil. And finally, by the champion of Cyrodiil, who entered one of Rife's unfinished paintings to free him and retrieve the brush. Her second artifact is the more traditional Helm of the Crusader. This helm was worn by the legendary Pelennor Whitestrake and was later recovered by the champion of Cyrodiil. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more lore content just like this and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. If you want to keep up with everything Fudge, head down to the description where you'll find links to our Twitter accounts. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Drew and I'll see you in the next one.